is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Hey guys, today we're here with Fabricio Suarez, a fellow artist from Art 150, a neighbor of mine. We have art studios there in downtown Georgia City. Thank you so much for being here today, Fabricio. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Good, thank you. Um, would you mind start? Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, so um, I'm originally from Uruguay, you know, and I've been here in the states for about you know 25 years now. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, originally I started, you know, always wanted to draw and paint, and I went to um, the School of Visual Arts in New York. Oh wow. Uh, for illustration and and cartooning and so I originally thought I was gonna do you know like children's books uh, oh, wow, that is and, nice and sort of like paint on the side yeah. I wanted to be an illustrator at the okay. beginning um, I didn't uh, I did not know much about really being a painter like practically thought you know I didn't know you can make a living as a yeah, painter you know yeah. like most people so I thought illustration is amazing so yeah. I'll be an illustrator of some sort um, and so when I got out of school, I worked as a freelance illustrator a lot, and I did some children's books. I worked in a publishing house um, as an in-house illustrator for a few years. Um, and then, I don't know, I got bored of it. It was kind of like a little... It wasn't as freeing, let's say, it wasn't as free. Yeah. yeah, you have to like take notes. You have to take, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of notes, basically, yeah. on, what, on what people want and redos and stuff like that. And it's just like, it really didn't make it fun yeah. um, for me. Maybe other people have different, you know, yeah. experiences and different styles. But for me personally, it wasn't meshing. And I like painting. I always loved sort of like plein air painting. And I studied as a plein air painter in college. Oh, I wow. used to take summer, uh, every summer I used to take like um, summer classes at SVA, like plein air painting. Yeah. With this amazing teacher, the um, Gregory Crane, it's a, a Brooklyn like legend for for plein air yeah. and, and all kinds of paintings, and, he, and he's a, a teacher at SVA. And so every summer, and and I took off like I love it. I love plein air painting. Like I uh -huh. take my easel when the weather gets nice, and sometimes yeah. when it's cold and wet. And, oh, wow, you and, do it in the cold? Yeah, wow, that's in, in the snow. I've done it in like yeah. rainy, uh, rainy uh, wow. snow, like. Um, but well, how long does it take you? Like, are well, you there until the product? You know, finished? the idea is to paint really fast oh, okay. and sort of to you know, couple of hours. Yeah. But if the weather is nice and I'm there, like I'll 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 stand in a corner because I like painting. Like right now, I I paint a lot of like um, like cityscapes oh, okay. around Jersey yeah. City and Hoboken. And so I'll stay like six hours, yeah. you know, like yeah. standing on a corner. Like and painting. do people bother you? I always wonder, like, oh, yeah. are they? Do a they? lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, you always have that those stragglers that are like, yeah. oh, you know, it's nice, whatever. I got, I sold a lot of paintings no straight way. from. Oh, that's amazing. From the easel. Yeah. Which is fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people just like stand behind you and like watch you for a long period wow. of time. But it's fine. I mean, you learn to deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean, you learn to like, like to block it off. Yeah, and also it's part of it. I, you know, it's I, it's understandable. You don't see a painter in a corner every day. You, people, no, yeah. People are and curious. Yeah. And they like stop. if you're not into art, it's yeah. Intriguing. So you know, I just entertain them for a little bit, and it's it's fun. You know, yeah. Boosts your ego a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So most people are like, wow, and you just <laughs> first, you know, you like, I just started the painting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like to I like to do that a lot, and then. I had a problem that, you know, I wanted to paint in the winter and like, I like to paint from life. I never like to paint from photographs. Mm -hmm. So I started sort of um, painting from imagination oh, wow. in my studio and sort of like playing with brush strokes and yeah. with mark making and, you know, just experimenting yeah. really. And that's how I sort of like started being more of a studio artist okay. like I left a little bit of the plein air on the yeah. side that became more challenging because mm -hmm. plein air painting it's fun yeah you're outdoor you look and you paint that's it yeah you look and you paint you don't have oh. to think yeah 
Um, and when you're in the studio, what do you paint? Yeah, you exactly. have to think. Yeah. So that's more challenging and that's more interesting to me. Um, and I have to ask, do you have, do you think like having a studio space has helped like your creative process? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, just having a space in general mm -hmm. has has helped. But I've always I've always painted no matter what. Yeah. Like whether I had a studio or not, as area of my house was always a studio. Oh, wow. corner. Did you use the kitchen table like I used to? Everything. Yeah. I okay. use it today. Yeah. Even though I have oh, a studio. Really? I go to I go I, my kitchen table is set up for watercolors and. Oh wow. So I like mean, when I, inspiration hits her there. I paint every night. I go home and I paint every night, wow. like, because I don't want to be in the studio and you know, want like yeah. be close and go to bed or something. Yeah. But I want to like, you know, I also don't like to watch TV mm -hmm. by itself. Yeah. I like to watch TV while I'm painting. Yeah, me too. So I, you know, I can't just watch TV yeah. and do nothing. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm the same wasting boy, time. Yeah. So I put my little iPad in my kitchen table yeah. and I, you know, paint until like until two o'clock in the morning and I go to bed. Uh -huh. um, but it, you know, I've always said that. If you have your your work already set up, mm -hmm. you know, or your easel, your your setup always up, yeah. you don't have to constantly like you know yeah. set up a corner to paint. Yeah. Then it's because it takes a lot of yeah. energy and, and then you just do yeah. it every day, and when you do it every day, it becomes habit, and that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then that's how I sort of started. Like now I do some photograph, okay, um, photo uh, reference from okay. photographs. But I normally just paint from memory or like oh, that's imagination really cool. or something. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, when I white paint off the canvas and something shows, I'll sort of go yeah. along. And I have another question. Are you, like, when you show up to your studio, are you all always able to have, like, an outcome to a product? Or do you find some days that you're kind of there, like, waiting for inspiration to hit? Or you just go, like, show up and you're ready to work? Mm, that's interesting question. I mean, definitely my approach is show up and go to work. Okay. Um, inspiration. There's a quote, right? Yeah. If anyone's inspira inspiration is for amateurs. Yeah. Professionals just show up to work. That's true. Yeah. You don't need to wait for anything. You gotta just, you know. And yeah, I've had you know bad days that you know like that I worked on pieces. I, I worked on pieces for weeks and then oh, wow. ended up wiping them off because. Oh, wow. Rage hits, yeah. something hits, and I couldn't fix it or something. Yeah. Um, and I wipe a whole painting off. But um, what was the question? <laughs> Just like when you show up, because I, like talking with different guests, I find it interesting how some people will either just show up and get to work right away and right. the inspiration would automatically yeah. show up or some people like me i would show up if i'm not inspired kind of like organize or clean the studio until right. it comes yeah and like when you start working on something are you able like if it doesn't turn out how you want it do you do you throw it out or do you like leave it on the side somewhere and then work on it maybe like weeks or months later yeah i leave it on the side for leave sure it on the side? Yeah, do you try to go back and like I add have. something to oh, it oh yeah i yeah. i i i've, I've repurposed many yeah. old paintings i was like i can like really do something with this yeah interesting not a lot but one or two yeah. you know nothing crazy mm -hmm. um because i like to just make new work mm -hmm. uh, i don't like to look back you know like yeah. what's done it's done yeah and it also shows your progress yeah I keep moving on yeah uh so but you know like if there's something that i'm not happy with i just like set it aside and see what happens yeah. to me months later because you know sometimes it's not really finished yeah and i just don't see a direction i'll just set it aside and maybe yeah. someday i'll see a direction but i think i you know i just go into my studio mm -hmm. and you know if the studio is clean i can get straight to work to right away if it's not i'll just clean up a little bit but like yeah you know your your, your setting has to be comfortable yeah. yeah like you know i scroll instagram for yeah, like yeah. 20 minutes and then i'm like what the hell am i doing yeah and, you know <laughs> Put the phone away and then get to work. Get to work. And I have um, another question. Do you normally prefer to work like in the mornings or are you like a nighttime person? Um, I like it all. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I love the quiet uh -huh. of the nighttime. Me too, yeah. Because peaceful, everybody yeah. feels like everybody's Nobody's sleeping. Nobody's going to call you or bother you. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but in the morning, that fresh, out of bed, uh -huh. if you can get to your studio, yeah. Early in the morning, a cup of coffee. I think you have a different energy too. Yeah, well, that's so that nice. morning energy. I think it's more.
helpful to create mm -hmm. and the night time is more helpful to like sort of continue and produce continue. Oh, wow. because I think the the ideas, <laughs> but I think for me the yeah. ideas in the morning the fresh ideas in the morning yeah. come cleaner and then at night you know I don't like I if I start a painting I want to start it in the morning yeah then it doesn't matter yeah but I like to paint both. I like I'm a night owl. Oh, that's I mean, amazing. I like to paint totally. And amazing. where do you get like your inspirations? Do you keep like a sketchbook, or you take pictures or screenshots of certain things? I do take work? a lot of pictures. Yeah. yeah. Um. I used to. I used to keep hundreds of. I mean, not hundreds, but I have a lot of sketchbooks. Yeah. A lot, oh, wow. especially from college. You know, drawings on the train and yeah. all things. Right now, not so much. Right now, I just have a lot of ideas, uh -huh. and if I have something, I just like draw it really quick. Yeah, yeah. And I do take a lot of pictures uh -huh. for like... And do you reference that? Like when you start a new painting, you're like, oh... Yeah. I just like mildly, right? Uh -huh. I don't fully like capture. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I like to reference some ideas mm -hmm. or patterns specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's how I sort of like get my... I don't I, like my inspiration. It doesn't really... Because, you know, the way I start my paintings, yeah. my inspiration doesn't really come from anywhere. Yeah. I started myself. And then I get inspired by just the movement of my arms. Got it. You know, because like if a painting is, I cover a painting in a color, uh -huh. uh, like a canvas in, a, in any color, and then I wipe with like a rag. Yeah. I wipe it off. And when I'm wiping it off, I start seeing things. Oh, I see. And so my the art is as I do it, and it's not before. I don't think of a yeah. piece before. Yeah. I don't sketch it out and I don't think about it. You're just like in the moment right I'm there. I'm in the moment, yeah. sort of making it, and then I'll like let the sort of movements guide me to see yeah. where I'm going to. I do have inspiration on like old masters. Okay. Who are they? Tell us. Oof. I mean, all of them, right? But like the uh, Dutch old masters. Okay. Um, Rachel Roy, the, um, the okay. flower painter. Yeah. She was unbelievable. So her paintings... Um, for my flowers are, are like super inspirational but then you know uh, Velasquez is okay. probably my favorite painter yeah. of all time um, and um, Rubens I mean of course so there's like the Dutch and the uh, yeah. Spanish um, masters uh, so I get sort of like inspiration from them what I get is little details mm -hmm. like oh look a hand yeah. I paint that hand oh, okay or the the composition okay. and the mood, like dark moods. That's why I like sort of like dark paintings yeah. a little bit. And the, do you think being from Uruguay has influenced your work? I would because have your work has a lot of colors. Yeah. And I thought it was like I would love to say yes. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to say yes, but I don't know. No, you know, a lot of times when I see these painters um, paint, you know people yeah. or people from their country mm -hmm. like I, I follow a few uh, Dominican painters and Puerto Rican painters oh, and well. they, they do paintings of their and people the and, yeah, yeah. and they're like it's Puerto Rico and I'm like I would love to do something yeah. like that but you know <laughs> it I'm not I, I left Uruguay so long ago that uh -huh. I mean I could do it about football and I thought about making yeah. I'm so passionate about not f football the sport yeah. but the, the national team oh, okay. of Uruguay right? yeah. just their soccer team yeah. And and so I, I always thought about doing paintings based on soccer somewhat, mm -hmm. but it doesn't flow from me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, like, they're two separate things. Yeah. Um, I did, in like 2010, when we did really good in the World Cup, uh -huh. I did do some paintings of the Uruguay stadiums, some yeah. soccer stadiums in between mountains, kind of like surreal, weird stuff. But um, I would love to say that Uruguay, but no, I mean, it just comes out of, like, mm -hmm. my own brain I Your guess. Brain. yeah and do you i notice a lot of like um sunsets and mm -hmm. ocean in your yeah. paintings in the background yeah can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so you know the being a landscape painter or a planner uh -huh. painter i think influenced me yeah. painting you know landscapes naturally i love nature i love landscapes and i think i am a little bit melancholic mm -hmm. and i don't like it mm -hmm. <laughs> so i try to just Put those in my paintings. I yeah. like my paintings to be like melancholic, and I think nothing like a sunset, you yeah. know, or like a, a moon, like looking up and yeah. pondering. 
and I like mystery and and I think that's why you know all these sunsets and moons and I like the the idea of just pondering nature mm -hmm. um, and yeah that's what that's I like interesting you say that because that's exactly like looking at your paintings it takes me like back to memories I even forget that I have you know <laughs> yeah because there's like um but in a good way like a sadness to it yeah yeah you know absolutely. what I mean like I don't know, like, it, there, there's a specific painting where it's, like, a sunset and there's flowers in the forefront. Mm -hmm. And that, like, when I looked at it, I remember, remember it reminded me, like, you know when you're younger and summer is ending and you're like, oh, oh I wish I could keep worst. this forever. Yes. But I remember, like, I get goosebumps. That's, like, what it took me back to. Wow. And I remember, I think, when we met, it was the, when I curated the show at the, the gallery. And at I the big you, gallery. Yeah, I think it had three beautiful paintings. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, like, seeing them and then, like, how I thought of it and then like seeing other people like on the opening night talking to each other and like observing. Are you, when you create your, your artwork, do you like, do you try to think of the like perspective of the person seeing your work or do you just create as it is? Like whatever Not you feel like it. Not at all? <laughs> no. Okay, good. I don't care about anybody. In that <laughs> well, manner, that's the right that, answer, in, yeah. In that sense, yeah. yeah. You can't make art for anybody. Yeah, it's, that's true. You know. But do you like hearing people's like perspective? Like do you sure, kind of I mean, find it fascinating? I like to hear good things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bad things actually. Yeah. Actually, I would prefer bad things. Constructive criticism. I would. Right? I, would I would prefer yeah. it because you know, like, hey, beautiful work. I'm like, great, thanks. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really give you much. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, but um, constructive criticism, yeah, all day long, and, but yeah, as far as taking people's mm -hmm. of their perspective, no. Yeah. Because, you know, people don't come to see what they want to see. Yeah. They can stay at home and watch their paintings. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> they come to see what you yeah. create, you yeah. know, not what they think you Definitely. should create. And then that painting, I remember, it was like, a, it was the ocean with on a boat, and it looked like figures mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. traveling with. Yeah. And I don't know, like, being an immigrant, I, rem I remember thinking, like, oh, my gosh, like, I remember thinking, like, oh, my God, the people in this boat, like, going to this new country, how scared it was for them. But then also, like, the native people being there, but, like, who are these people showing up? Like, right. I've never seen these people before. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, your work really takes you, like, on a full journey. Like, it really soaks you in. Mm -hmm. And there's so much details. And there's a background. There's a forefront. And that's why I like it so much. And that's why I wanted to have you as a guest, because I really find it fascinating. It reminded me... When I first saw it, I didn't know much about you. Like, I don't think we even met. I saw your Instagram because, like, we were in the same art studio place. Right. But I remember it reminded me, like, uh, like Francis Beacon. Yeah. But, like, in a better way where it's not, like, depressive. It was, like, <laughs> like a happy sadness. You know, yeah. like, when you have something happen that's good, but you're able to look back with, like, a happy emotion and right, memory. Like bittersweet. Yeah, her. exactly. Bittersweet. Uh, but that's like what it reminded me of and I said oh my god this is like the coolest thing ever <laughs> but I remember seeing people look at it and like notice different things on the flowers or the background I thought oh I wonder if he just paints you know from inspiration or there's kind of like you know a, a foreplan like a background that he kind of wants to suck the people like the people in and like look at the little details and look over here look over there yeah yeah, yeah I, I definitely like paintings that you know sometimes I want to simplify my paintings yeah like but simplified it, while they can be beautiful yeah it's hard to hide yeah things and i want to hide things in a painting yeah and know? i love that yeah, yeah. i love I that want, you do that yeah i want people to like look for things yeah. and not just to like uh look and move, over exactly, and move on yeah. like uh wait what yeah. could that be? What you yeah. know? It's like the remember that little guy. Where's Waldo? They have to yeah, look because yes. there's so many details. Like that one you did with the garden. It was like that like amazing. A twelve by twelve, I think. Yeah. And it had like a little hidden skull. And I remember finding it. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel, I feel like nobody would see this besides me. I love it's like that. An adventure. I yeah. think the initial um, influence for that is Peter Bruegel. Oh, okay. You know, and like Hieronymus Bosch. Yeah. Um, because you know all those hellish scenes of yeah. humanity and you know it's like how do they yeah. how do they exactly how do they come up with that, up with that? exactly <laughs> and all the details like you see little things everywhere like you keep wanting to look at those yeah. paintings they're yeah. so i saw one just in it was it's just amazing I, I, seeing them in person 
Just live as if that, yeah. Yeah, and that's my thing. And do you all, always paint with oil? Or do you like do different mediums? Um, I have always painted with oils. Never looked back. Oh wow. Never did anything else. Lately, because of some uh, side work that I've yeah. had doing murals and certain things, like I did a mural for my son, for example, in his bedroom. Oh, wow. And I couldn't use oils, and yeah. I started with acrylics. And okay. I, you know, so I, acrylics are good, uh, you know, especially for illustration. Yeah. Because, you know, you can just be, but, you know, for acrylic, it doesn't serve my purpose because you got to be more deliberate. Yeah. And I like fluidity where yeah. oils gives you more of a like more spontaneous yeah, yeah oils you know, will surprise me acrylics not oh wow and acrylics is plastic you know oils is from yeah. mother earth so oh, wow, that's... and i like watercolors and gouache oh i've never my... seen watercolor from you i have to check yeah it out. oh so like a bit, i did a bunch of like series of um oh the flowers the flowers oh, yeah, no, yeah. yeah i've seen those and those yeah. are like my kitchen oh, table wow, drawings. that's really cool those are the ones that i do at night um, and those are mostly watercolor, but I like wa gouache a lot because mm -hmm. it's kind of like this matte, it's kind of like yeah. oil a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah, and I like those to play around with, yeah. and, you know, do small works. And, and you mentioned you have a son, has like, how is that as, I don't mean, I don't have kids, so I always wonder like, having a child, does that like give you more freedom? Cause you're, you know, with the child and have like this wild imagination. Yeah. Like, does it help you to be like more creative, like boundless creation and inspired? Well, definitely. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't, I think it, it, it he has inspired me in different uh -huh. ways yeah. uh, because he's just such a like wild kid. How old <laughs> is he? He's six. Oh wow, that's a good, that's uh, a, like the yeah. good age of Yeah, so like I see all his drawings and you know, I think everything influences you a little yeah. bit. Um, definitely hasn't given me any more freedom as far yeah. as time goes. Yes, I can imagine. You know, <laughs> but uh, but it's good. It's great. You know, I love it. Oh, wow. I have I have time to paint. I have time to be a dad. So it's and it's do you good. like um, because like I always imagine like me later on in life like having a kid is like my my dream is like have my kid in my studio. You know what I mean? Oh, like, do you yeah. do that? Yeah. yeah, that was my dream too, right? Oh, yeah, wow. that, get, that's. If you want a kid, that's kind of like a nice little yeah. thing to, to do. So because of our studio situation, yeah. I don't want to bring them too much because oh, okay. I don't want to be too loud, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we do have like paint sessions at home. Oh, that's really I nice. brought them to the studio a couple of times. Yeah. But we do have like um, some paint sessions at home yeah. and he loves painting and drawing. In fact, some of his drawings I've tattooed in my arm. No so, way. <laughs> that's yeah, so cool. Uh, I just love his little, oh, wow. his little drawings. Oh, that's so cool. This one, we have to include this in the video. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's so dope. So this wow. one when he was like four. Do you have a picture of this on Instagram? Because I love to share with like the listeners. Uh, it's up to you if you don't. If you yeah, want yeah. To think actually, it's I think not on my Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I like sometimes put them on my stories yeah. or something. Oh wow, that's really yeah. cool. But I'll, I'll I'll send you a picture. Yeah, if you fun. don't mind, it's really yeah. nice. And do you um like keep his like all his drawings? No, or like just the good, good ones. ones. Yeah, just the good <laughs> ones. Yeah. I'm not gonna like it's too much. Yeah. Uh, and just a few, you yeah. know, nothing crazy. Because yeah. what am I, you know? Yeah. Like, Otherwise, you have a few yeah, like archives. It's yeah. too much, but uh, yeah, I keep a few things here yeah. and there. I just try to be selective and yeah. and save some of his art. I mean, I already yeah, saved it in exactly. my arms, have that so for life. That's, that's because you mentioned earlier, you kept some of your sketchbooks from during college and after college. Oh yeah, I mean, I have high school yeah. oh, sketches. Wow. What's like the know? earliest that you have? Oh, I have work? kindergarten. No way. Yeah, I have oh, a kindergarten. So I have um, so. Actually, in Uruguay, I went to this really nice school that every year, at the end of the year, they put all of your work uh -huh. into this beautiful leather-bound books. Oh my God, that's so sweet. So I have from first grade for to- For every student? For every student, oh, wow. for every year. And they're like- This big, you know, yeah. They're like huge. So, and they're these beautiful leather-bound books, and I have six from oh. first to sixth grade. And I have all my, you know, horrible math homework yeah. and my art oh, and that's a so lot cool. of that and then i have some bigger like pads from yeah. kindergarten that my mom saved that's amazing yeah and do you ever like look back from like an artist's perspective like to see or maybe like get new ideas and to see how far you come like from a kid to like the high school to the college 
and kind of like reminisce and like take. The, I don't look back too much. You don't look back too much. No, no. I mean, I think it's it's nice. I've, I have it. You know, it's it's all there. But like, I don't reminisce like, yeah. like that. Um, I try not to. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned before um, how you like to paint like landscape in person. Have you ever gone to the mat and done that? No, um, I know that there's a, sort of like a program that you yeah. have to apply for. Um, I just always figured that there's so many great artists in New York yeah. that that list is probably like I don't know. I didn't know there was a like a program. I knew there was like a, a list. Like you could you just like go and, for example, with your no, stuff and yeah, like yeah. set up, you know, <laughs> at the mat. Uh, there was like uh, I think there's a program where you apply. Uh -huh. And they said, you know, now you're like a copy artist or something like that. Oh, that. okay, just yeah, so you have to do something yeah. like that. And since that's not my wheelhouse, yeah. I mean, I would love to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was like a free for all, but yeah. like, and since it's not my wheelhouse, I'm not going to go through the whole process to see what kind of mediocre painting I can. Oh copy, my gosh! You know? yeah. that's oh, that's a shame because I, th I thought the process was much easier than that. I thought like I mean, it, it might be easier. Yeah. I just think I didn't do it myself because yeah. like. You like the know. freedom of being in the moment. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't like. I mean, I've done some copies, but I'm not. I don't. I'm not interested in making copies of any artwork. Yeah. I love other artwork, right? But yeah. like, it's not like. I've done like some Velasquez, you know, a little uh -huh. like in watercolor specifically, oh, okay. just as a practice and to have. Yeah. Because I like it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, nothing in oils or like nothing yeah, that I would plus, consider yeah. I want to show or something yeah. like that. And then from like watercolor, acrylic, and oil, like what's your favorite medium? Acrylic is out of the door. Out I of hate the door. Bye bye. <laughs> Only for the mural, right? Only for the murals. Um, watercolors and gouache are great. Yeah. I mean, I, I use them together. They're both so different, but you can use them together. Mm -hmm. um, I like them both for their own thing. Like, and I was so afraid of watercolors. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah, it's very it's difficult. So a lot difficult. of people are scared. Yeah. But you just gotta get in there. Yeah you like it i mean i started doing this like nighttime drawings with yeah. my setup uh, at home like maybe two three years ago mm -hmm. and i just do it every single night and yeah. i've gotten so much better and i can i can totally see the progress and i was like i was so afraid and it's not that hard if you yeah. like it right you know mm -hmm. if you're into it it's not crazy just pick up a few tips on youtube and, go, and yeah. you're good to go <laughs> and i noticed as you mentioned before the watercolor flowers do you normally use watercolor for like when you're doing flowers or small portraits of flowers um no i mean i normally paint in oils just okay. in the studio yeah. it's only oils only, oil. only oils in my studio but then at home i like to like do the watercolors mm -hmm. i just feel like it's more of an intimate yeah. setting it's nice uh and i would like to show them because i like taken seriously yeah especially oh, the, the, yeah. the, the what the latest watercolors mm -hmm. um but yeah there's so much fun to paint and also really hard oh my god yeah um like the watercolor uh medium or the flowers the flowers themselves oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because they're like intricate you know like mm -hmm. i like i don't know sometimes and specifically because since i cannot be as free as I can with oils mm -hmm. for a composition yeah. I have to draw the composition with a pencil mm -hmm. and I have to draw lightly mm -hmm. so that's the challenging part where I have to like be deliberate in my composition and I just cannot let it come to me yeah I have to actually know what I'm doing yeah. before right plan, so that's yeah. the difference this one I have to plan it out yeah versus in the studio where they just come as they wish yeah no that makes sense that makes sense all right, so do you ever get stuck like when you're in your creative process? Like, do you ever have a time in your life where you kind of had like a writer's block in regards to art and were you able to like overcome that? I'm not sure. I think I think I have a few times, but you know, I think they were more for other reasons than mm -hmm. artistic, like personal okay. reasons. You like know? real life going stuff. Going through a breakup yeah. or something like that. I think certain things like that uh, could sort of give you yeah a little bit of that and I, I don't think the art itself is mm -hmm. because if you know how to paint you've done it before you do wherever you know you yeah. can do whatever you want I think it's just an, a different type of blockage mm -hmm. that is preventing that yeah um, if everything is good I feel like if my apartment is clean yeah my studio is yeah. decently clean yeah. 
uh, I can get to work. Yeah. And like I said, I think that that quote by Chuck Close, I think it is, that this is artists, you know, show up to work, yeah. professionals show up to work. I take that to heart. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be um, sort of pondering, you know, like what to paint. Mm -hmm. I want to just, you know, that's why I have that process that allows me to, for the painting to come to me. I don't mm -hmm. have to look for it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And then um, when you're painting, like, what's your process? Do you, our previous guest, shout out to Zara. Um, she normally, I remember seeing her Instagrams on her time lapse. She paints like with the painting like on the wall mm -hmm. where I normally paint it with like on my lap or on the floor or mm -hmm. you know what I mean when you paint because your work is so intricate like how like where where do you place your paint like on the easel on the table yeah. that's a good question I like to paint on the wall like you're standing up standing oh up. wow I think when you're standing up yeah you are more attentive yeah you're more purposeful yeah and you have more body movement mm -hmm. um and when you're sitting down, you're more sedentary. Yeah. So I think it's sort of like, it does not a favor to the painting, starting a painting sitting down. Un so, unless you're an illustrator, maybe like if you yeah. go, like, like you said, you know, you just like sit down and you like, you know what to do, boom, yeah. you do it. But I think standing up with a painting on the wall, it makes it more purposeful. And, and then when I sometimes I need to get detail or something like that, just get my mole stick and I'll yeah. sort of like, you know, get in there. At night, when I'm super tired or something, mm -hmm. like I fall asleep in front of an easel. I take the oh, painting, wow. I'll put it on the easel. If I want to sit down for a little while, yeah. and I'll paint on the easel. Um, but like, you know, if I'm tired, if I'm painting, yeah. I, I, I sit down. But 99% of the time, I sort of stand up, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So you try to stand up from like start to finish in a way. It, do I as much as you oh, can. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For oh, sure. Wow. So you like it's almost like a performance, but you give yourself, you know. You know, it has to be. I yeah. think. You know, like for like I said, when I paint plain air, mm -hmm. there's no sitting down. I mean, you can sit yeah. down too, I guess. Do you at all? No. So you like bring your easel and your frame and the whole time. So if you're there for five hours, you're standing, standing up the whole time. Five hours. Oh my gosh, that's dedication. Yeah. No, it's. Wow. I think it's kind of like you're into it. You mm -hmm. know, it's just. Um, and like I said, I think standing up, you're more attentive. Yeah. You're like you're more, more alert. present. Yeah. You're more alert. And it's more, I don't know, I think it's like the way to go. <laughs> the way no, to go. I agree. I agree with what you said. And I have a question. Um, if you could go back in time to yeah. your younger self, what's like art an artistic advice you would tell your younger self? Oh, oh, uh, hmm. I would say, <laughs> stop going out and paint. <laughs> yes. Uh, work every day on the craft, yeah. every single day. I would say just start working every day because I think I went to school, I went to art school when I was like probably 23. Mm -hmm. And before then, I didn't paint every day. I would paint, mm -hmm. you know, once every so often yeah. I like to paint and then I was planning to go to art school and so I would paint very little mm -hmm. I wouldn't paint every single day yeah. and then when I went to school you know clearly in school I would do it and then after school most people just fall off and start doing something else yeah and I got on the boat right away I got a studio and I started painting and ever since then I paint every single day oh that's amazing but beforehand i wish i'd done that because yeah. i think it would have given me a leg up or something yeah i'm so fascinated yeah. that you have this like huge archive of work like to see like a retrospective of your work yeah of, like because you know a lot of artists don't have that much access to their work or they lost it or whatever yeah but the fact that you do i would be like so fascinated to see like compare your work now to like your earliest sketch and right because sometimes you get to see like oh my gosh there's like a flower now and then a flower then it's right. kind of like a prophecy in a way yeah. you know yeah um and then a lot of people through like the guests of interview they a lot a lot of the questions has been how do you get started as an artist like what would you tell a young artist that you know feels like inside they're an artist but they don't know what's the next step like what advice would you give them? 
I would just say to to, to your art. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to worry. Yeah. Because first of all, if you consider yourself an artist and you want to become an artist, then you already are. Yeah. And, and 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 it's not to say like, oh, if you think you're an artist, you're an artist. No. Yeah. If you do the work, you're an artist. Yes. So do the work, and then, you know, show your work as much as possible. That's it. But I I never worried about showing my work until not that long ago. Mm -hmm. I people know sometimes they want like that immediate gratification. Yeah. And they wanna you know make a painting and they're like I'm a professional. I want this on a wall. Yeah. It's like I did like four hundred thousand yeah. paintings. Yeah. And the idea is to churn out work mm -hmm. and not to like treat every painting as mm -hmm. the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Because if every painting is the Mona Lisa, then you're a genius. Congratulations. Yeah. They don't have genius. It doesn't work. Just trust the process. <laughs> you know, I think, the, you know, there's a, a really great book called Art and Fear. Oh, wow. It's a really thin book, but it's amazing. And one of the, one of the chapters they talk about, um, they send a group of 10 people uh -huh. to do the best, the best um, uh, pottery that they can make, uh -huh. the best one. And then they put another 10 people to make the most pottery that they can make in, in the day. Yeah. The ones that were chosen to make the best, mm -hmm. they spent the whole day thinking about oh, wow. what would the best yeah, look like. pot look like. While the other ones just got to work, just got to work. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the ones who did the most got the best, made the best one because practice. Yeah. While the other ones, it wasn't the best because yeah. all they did was think about the what fear. would the best look like. Yeah. The fear of what it would look like. So, yeah. the idea is to work, and then just get to work. Just yeah. get to work, and then I love that. Whatever. I have to check that book happens. out. Um, I also wanted to ask you. Do you do you ever have like a uh, artwork that you know you worked hard on it, but in the end you thought mm, maybe this is not good, and then you like had somebody see the work and they're like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. You ever had something like that happen? Yeah, a yeah. lot. Like, did you ever? Because I had that happen and it started like, I questioned things like, oh my gosh, maybe I should like start focused on this subject and this. Did that something like that happen to you not as well? No, We're just like, oh great, no. whatever. Thank you for thinking. Yeah. If you want it, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't change my perspective at all. Yeah. Some people, you know, I can go by what people like. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they like. Yeah. People don't know what they like. Exactly. And they like, you know, they like some bad stuff. Yeah. There's some bad art. Yeah. There's a lot no, of bad that's art. That's true. Yeah. And and they like it too. People yeah. buy, you know, bad art everywhere, and they put it in their homes, All like the it's the Mona Lisa yeah. or yeah. something. And brag about it. Yeah. And you know, so like. And it not to mean that your or our or that piece that you made is bad, mm -hmm. just to say that you know everybody has different tastes. Yeah. You just gotta do what you do. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to consider something that you've done before and do it again, I think yeah. it's a good idea. Um, but yeah, it's just I think follow your own, mm -hmm. you know, no, I got you. thinking. And do you try to, like, in regards to your work, do you try to find new mediums to work with, or you just kind of like focus on the oil and like. Like, what's next for me? How can I, you know, yeah. take my work to the next level? Think, or are you more like into a medium, like where you're like, oh, I want to try digital art or right. something like that? I mean, I love drawing on my iPad. But, oh, you do? Uh, <laughs> I love doing animations, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I do, I, there's a really cool animation now. Uh, but no, absolutely when not. When you say animation, do you mean like cartoon, like movement? Yeah. Oh, wow. And during the pandemic, I made That's a bunch so of cool. like little, um, in the Pro Procreate yeah. app, there's a little animation assist, and yeah. I did a, a bunch of cool illustra animations there. Wow. It's so much fun. That's so cool. And uh, and that's fun, you know, yeah. to do. But uh, and I actually love editing and putting music to it oh, or something. Wow. But no oils. I'm gonna live and die with oils. Mm -hmm. That's my only medium. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's your work my is thing. truly, truly terrific. I can't look anywhere else. I think mm -hmm. oils has. It, it, you'll never conquer them. It's yeah. like. The, the painting in general or art, but um, and oils, I think you can there, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. So, no. And how do you decide um, with your artwork, like the size of your frame? Does it have to do with your inspiration or? No, I mean I like I like working in all shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, I like working uh, or sizes. I like working large. 
I like working small, mm -hmm. not too small. Yeah. But you know, eight by ten, yeah. like is the smallest okay. kind of thing. But um, whatever, you know. I think the the, the size kind of dictates the painting for sure for me. Like you know, I'm not gonna make a same type of painting. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I like large paintings. I think I like to work on large pieces. So Fabrizio, I saw that on your Instagram. Do you want to plug in your Instagram right now so everybody listening can yeah, go it's, look? Yeah, uh, F Suarez Art. Okay, perfect. And then do you have a website as well? Yeah, it's FabriziusWires.com. Okay, perfect. And there's a link to your website and your Instagram, so it mm -hmm. makes it easy. Perfect. Yeah. And do you take commissions just to double check? I mean, sometimes I do. Yeah. If I actually like the commission, yeah. I'll take it. I mean, if people are like, paint my sister with their dog, I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. But, you so know. nothing generic, something... Yeah, something like um, I did a series of um, paintings for a restaurant in Jersey City. Oh, okay. Uh, and I did this one large uh, painting of uh, like a pasta, the poster of a, for a pasta oh, wow. boy from like uh -huh. the 1940s. Yeah. And I had a lot of fun. It's kind of illustration work for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but I loved it. And somebody actually asked me if I can do a version of that. And I, I oh, took wow. that commission. But That's really I normally cool. don't take it because my work is so, I, you know, yeah. so uh, out there. But um, yeah, I really do. Okay. So do you mind telling us about the watercolor flowers that I saw? Is that, is that something you're working on at the moment? Um, yeah, well, I did a series of watercolor flowers okay. um, that uh, it's all ongoing, basically. And then right now I'm working on, uh, on a series of landscapes, mm -hmm. uh, again, with yeah. some nature flower themes. Um, but I'm looking to work with some skulls and skeletons. Yeah. And, Oh, that's really there. cool. Yeah. And do you, like, have you ever traveled abroad or, like, in a different state or whatever and done, like, the live painting or only when you're local? Yeah, no, I've done it. I've done it in Europe. I've done it in Amsterdam. Oh, wow, that's so in cool. Prague. And, and how is, like, the demographic, like, people abroad, are they, like, curious or are same, they... Same. Same, same reaction? A lot of people come and want to talk to you. Yeah. They want to, you know, see you work. Um, but, again, that's kind of, like, part of a whole gig and yeah. it's fine. And and how do you plan for such a thing? Like, you have to have your materials and stuff, but, like, do you just... Because I've never done it, so I'm just, like, wondering, do you just, like, take your, your material travel, and show up? Or do you try to go back to the place you saw that was beautiful? Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you, like, kind of plan for the, the location, or you just walk around and then if you like around. it... Yeah. And if you saw, like, you see something, you just drop the easel and start right. painting? Yeah. Oh, wow. So there's okay. some sort of, like, two schools. Like, some people, you know, will see a tree stump and yeah. will paint the living out of it, right? Yeah. Like, they will paint it to death. Yeah. And other people, they need to go around and get inspired by yeah. something that they see. Some people can just paint the fence, mm -hmm. you know? Other people, I think, have to, like, look for... Uh, uh, something to that you really like mm -hmm. i'm kind of in the latter part where oh, i kind okay. of like, look for something but i you know i put everything in my backpack yeah and i go for a walk and oh, wow. whenever i see something that i like i'll take my so fabrice my previous guests we talked about their like where they get the ideas from some people say planes trains when they wake up when they're going to sleep in the shower yeah. where do like do you think your ideas come from i don't know they, they just, just pop up they just pop up i mean Someday, the other day, I was like, I want to paint a fox, just out of the blue. Uh -huh. I don't know. I just thought of a fox or a wolf or something like the mouth, the snout, the tail. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought uh -huh. of it, and I was like, they would look great in one of my paintings. And, uh, and it's just in, in the back of my head. And yeah. right now, I thought, literally, probably two hours ago. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I, ha I, was, I was talking to a friend on the phone, and, uh, and I was looking at my painting. I was in the studio. Yeah. And an idea popped to me, I was like, oh, I want to paint a skeleton there. Yeah. So now I'm going to work on some skeletons. But yeah, it just popped out of nowhere. Oh, that's genius. Because uh, um, some people say, like, when you have an idea, do you write it down right away? Or do you, because I, like, with previous guests, they say, like, if they write it down sometimes, that idea is gone forever. Because it kind of, kind of, yeah, it kind of like lose, leaves their body and goes to the next person. Huh. Where some people prefer to write it down and then they use it as, like, reference for their right. painting. Which one are you? I think the first one is a little like extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Not extreme, but it's kind of a little like, uh, like, you know, like <laughs> out of nature, like crazy. Yeah. Like I mean, 
it goes into the world. It's a little yeah. bit, you know, like. No, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like, yeah. that. like if I have a good idea and I sketch the idea before I paint the idea, yeah. it's horrible. Like I lose it. Well, yes, because it's always the the idea is always different in your mind yeah. when you put it down. But then at some point you have to put it down, and if it's not that what you know, I've for example thought about ideas where I put it down, it's not what I thought, yeah. and then I was like, well, I guess it wasn't the right idea, yeah. and it's true. Yeah. Literally, the other day I, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to do this sort of like Black Lagoon monster on this painting. Yeah. Just out of, I don't know why yeah. I thought of it. It just came to me, right? Mm. Because I kind of like the old posters of yeah. the creature from the Black oh, yeah, Lagoon. Yeah. So I was going to make this creature of the Black Lagoon. And then I went home and I was like, let me do a watercolor on this. Yeah. So I, I did it. And then I was like, this would look horrible in my painting. <laughs> it's not what I had in my head. Yeah. In my head, I had this like something that meshed with it yeah and then when i put it to paper i was like oh no i don't think i could do this yeah so not all i not every idea is a good idea even though you think at the time it's a good yeah. idea i think once you put it on paper it's a true test whether yeah. that was a good idea or not. or not yeah i think it's not that it goes to the next person when you put it down is that it wasn't a good idea to begin with yeah because if it's a good idea, it'll stay. It yeah. will not leave you alone. It will like incubate, as I said. Absolutely. Say. Yeah. Like the idea of this fox, I didn't write down paint fox. Yeah. I just thought of it and it just keeps reoccurring in my head. So I'm like, at some point, you know, if I put it down, you know, it kind of works or it doesn't. And when you're in the studio, you mentioned like you're listening to like TV shows on your iPad and stuff. Do you listen to music or like do you have. I listen like, to podcasts. You listen to pod. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I listen to like um, his. I like I love history podcasts. Oh, okay. Like um, uh, like documentaries or stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. There's this one called uh, the you know um, real dictators. Oh, I have no seen. Sure. It's all it it's all about like you know they talk about Stalin and Hitler mm -hmm. and like Mugabe and so it's, I like history podcasts or you know like you know any other. It like, does like what you're listening to affect your work that you're working on or no. does it go to the next no or is it just kinda, like two different things yeah two different things okay it, it kind of keeps me company more than music music yeah. feels like i don't know i don't listen to a lot of music oh wow, that's it's so just there and you know i feel alone when i'm with music oh but really when I'm with a podcast i'm you like feel like yeah i have a it's kind of like having a friend that you don't have to give too Absolutely. much attention to but it's there right. yeah i get what you mean it's like you know especially something that narrates mm -hmm. like i love that's why i love these a history podcast yeah. because they sort of like just narrate it's not a conversation they have to like follow back and yeah. forth or many voices you can like tune in and out and you still be yeah and they talk about you know the war of 1950 you know like whatever yeah. and then you just like you're you're painting and, and that's yeah. just like nice to listen to and to sort of pay attention to but at the same time i'm focused on what i'm doing mm -hmm. um more than just yeah music music is a lot of people listen to music. I, I do, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it depends. Like, I try to match the music to my mood. Oh, I was going to say, but then what kind of music? Too, like, a lot of, like, metal. Oh, really? Like, no if kidding. I'm stuck, like, metal? on something, like, crazy metal, metal yelling, like, and then I'll, I have, like, a crazy play, like, I put on shovel, but Did I have... Did you say heavy metal? Heavy metal, like, like, ah, like Ozzy Osbourne, you wow. know what I mean? Wow. So, like, that's, like, if I'm stuck. So yeah. then it'll go from... Like, when I was traveling in Amsterdam, like, uh, I went to this nightclub and they play, like, underground German. I don't even know what to call it. It was just, like, <laughs> yeah. amazing. It's just sounds. But it, it's almost like um, like an underground German nightclub, like a factory. And it has this, like, weird factory sounds in the music. Mm -hmm. So it just, like, I mean, like, when I drive and my phone is plugged into my car, yeah. it goes from, like, it'll go from, like, <coughs> Ozzy Osbourne to Britney Spears to, like, Kurt Cobain yeah. to Nirvana, Foo that's Fighters. My, you know what music, I mean? Yeah, so it's, same. like, crazy. Yeah. But um, but if I'm real, like, if I have the idea in my head, ready to go, ready to paint, everything's structured, then I do listen to either, like, an interview on YouTube or, like, a podcast because the structure that I'm listening to yeah. and the way they're talking helps me go step by step. Right. So that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I love doing this podcast because, like, seeing different artists create a process. Sometimes we're similar, sometimes we're so different. Right, yeah. Absolutely. So, like, like right now we're si like we have a we're similar with this but then a lot of times somebody will be similar with the previous guest that i have and i'm like oh wow that's such an interesting connection yeah you get to know each other yeah yeah we'll have different connections yeah. but also you know people say oh typical artist but i'm like there's no typical yeah. artist you know we're like any other sort of group mm -hmm. <laughs> there's many different things and it's 
there's like clean cut yeah there's you know <laughs> dirty so, artists yeah. they, they go from a to z exactly so um but there's nice to have similarities mm -hmm. and to like find common ground yeah and where do you see yourself in like 10 15 years or do you just are you like thinking of the future or yeah, just in the moment not too much <laughs> i don't not think too much, much like that no i'd rather not yeah I'm i mean i just have my son yeah my painting i'm happy now i'm yeah. grateful i'm thankful that i get to do it and I'm just uh, trying to be happy and be happy with yeah. gratitude. That's the best way to be. <laughs> yeah. I love that because I'm like that too. All right, Fabrizio, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. It's been a blessing and a pleasure to have you here. Um, just to double check again, can you tell us your Instagram? Yes, yeah, F Suarez Art. Perfect. And can you spell that because some people yeah, F, don't know? Uh, F as in Frank, S as in Sam, U A R E Z Z Art. Perfect. And then for the website, www.fabriciosuarez.com. Perfect. All right. And then we can just follow you there. Please go follow yeah. him. And then we can keep track of his amazing work. Thank, Thank you, you again. So Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. <laughs>